Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it to air. Monday. I uh, was gone for the last couple weeks. You might have noticed, you might not have, but uh, I'm back now. And where I was was California, Southern California. I was there for the San Diego Comic Con at first. And then I'm really unsure if it was wise or unwise in hindsight, but after that, we decided to do some theme parks. We're figuring, well, you're down in California anyway. Well, you don't want to spring for airfare again, so why not just tack it on to the end? After being completely exhausted by the Comic Con side of things, and crowds and crowds of people. We did a day at Disneyland and then a day at Universal Studios, and holy cow. Um, am I am I a Disney adult now? Now that I've gone once as an adult, uh, I ask, because one of the first things we did after getting home was uh, start watching videos on how some of the rides worked, and then that very quickly turned into watching videos about other theme parks, and immediately we just didn't skip a beat. We started talking about making plans to go to these places as if it's going to happen. Took us several years plus a pandemic to make this year's trip happen, so like I'm not I'm not holding my breath or anything. But I will say that the crowds at Disneyland, if you care to know, were way more tolerable than at Universal Studios. The entitlement was real on the lower lot, let's just say that. Uh, but I will say this. At Universal Studios, they've got the brand new Super Nintendo World, and that itself was worth the BS. And uh, the BO. It, well, mostly. It's been a minute since I did this. Getting all caught up on the music news. Here's some headlines for you for today. Of course, we had sad news over the weekend as Sinead O'Connor uh, passed away. The Foo Fighters, along with Alanis Morissette, did honor Sinead O'Connor with a rendition of uh, a cover, a Mandinka s- a cover. They also said, for a beautiful woman with high intelligence and deep empathy way ahead of her time, who is no longer with us. Very, very sad. Uh, Korn are in the news in a weird way, as they're going to be partnering up for a shoe collaboration with Adidas. They've got two different distinct pairs of shoes, as well as a company in clothing in a collection that's going to apparently drop a little bit later on this year. Uh, with a full new metal uh, aesthetic to it. The originals of the uh, collection start at $130 US, and some going far more expensive than that. Expect a lot of blacks and whites in there. Madonna in the news again, saying that she feels lucky to be alive. It has now been one month since she was able to leave the hospital after a very scary health uh, situation. She did say, thank you to all my angels who protected me and let me stay to finish doing my work. She was supposed to be starting off a leg of a tour, has postponed that portion of it, but will still be going on tour and does plan to fully, fully, not reimburse, but uh, reschedule all of the dates that were missed. Apologies given over a corn maze. Interesting. Uh, Down in Edmonton, a traditional annual corn maze that opens up with a new theme every year. Now has an RCMP theme and, well, some people... I've not had the best interactions with the RCMB uh, historically, and that's, you know, caused some people to say, hey, it's not really as inclusive for everybody as you might be claiming it is. Uh, they've issued the apology. Uh, I do think it seems like a bit of a thing that is a lot of attention that maybe doesn't need to be. It is 150 years of the RCMP, like it's a milestone thing. And no, no organization ever that's been 150 years old has the cleanest track record, let's be honest. But still, I actually thought (laughs) I was tricked by my significant other. She said the people were upset about this maze, showed me the photo, because there is one line of the maze that joins up to the RCMP figure right at the butt level. (laughs) I was thinking, oh, are people upset because it's like you get pooped out by the RCMP officer if you happen to go down that path? (laughs) No, that wasn't the case at all. Oh, my naivete. Um, People are a little bit upset. People are a little bit sorry. Seems like this is going to be a non-issue. Here's the thing. I would just love any kind of corn maze, again, uh, here in the Wood Buffalo area. I would love to do a corn maze, although, asterisk on that, it's only July 31st. I don't want to be thinking about corn mazes until it's actually fall, okay? Tuesday. A new day in cigarette sales in Canada, uh, being the first of any nation to roll out the regulations that every single cigarette sold needs to have a warning on the cigarette we've moved on far from just the packaging the warning on the labels which have been around for as long as i have been around um and uh they were they, they were made bigger they're made uh you know now with pictures at one point and uh really really gross ones at times 
And I think there's some sort of thought that people still haven't seen the warning, that people are still not in the know. And I get it, because a big of the big target of campaigns like this is new smokers and young smokers. And admittedly, they might not be quite so aware of all of the uh, the setbacks. And to be fair, going way back into the past, older generations may even remember the time when they were advertised as healthy for you straight up before, you know, regulations when it came to advertising came down where you kind of have to sort of at least try to tell the truth about what's going on with your product right uh but i i've got such a cynical mind when it comes to this i feel like people have seen the warning they still just kind of want it anyway my brain is still stuck in 1992 with dennis leary talking about it doesn't matter how big the warnings are you could have cigarettes that were called warnings you could have cigarettes that come in a black pack with a skull and a crossbone on the front called tumors <laughs> And smokers will be lined up around the block. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, see, there's some glimmer of truth there, but there is also a glimmer of truth to trying to uh, at least share information about a product that could be causing some bad health. And to anybody who is wanting to quit smoking, I wish nothing but success for you. A lot of times, it's kids who want their parents to kick the habit, and this might just be a way to help with that, at least a conversation starter. So I can't completely knock it. World reeling with the death of Paul Rubens. A lot of uh, very, very touched people who knew him in life uh, have been outpouring with sentiment about the, the actor, the performer, the com- comedic genius passing away at the age of 70 after a private battle with cancer. And Jack White amongst them, he actually uh, shared a eulogy for his friend Paul and also included details about uh, the way that they stayed uh, in connection after meeting on the set of the Raconteur's music video, Steady As She Goes. Yes, he was in that. He was in a lot of things that people weren't aware of that have now been coming back to light, of course. Dexies in the news as well, a.k.a., uh, well, formerly known as, really, Dexies Midnight Runners. They are going to be embarking on their first North American tour in about four decades. They actually have a brand new album out called The Feminine Divine and are going to be supporting that with a tour that's going to be starting in uh, the UK and then joining into North America after it's uh, started off in September. Uh, and then I think October 26th is the first US gig in Los Angeles, 14 date tour into November. Unfortunately, you know, nowhere near town uh, are they going to be stopping by. In fact, it's barely North American, but I do see Vancouver on the list. Doesn't count. You're listening to the Steve Reed Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. You could get all kinds of Subway as long as you just let people call you Subway. Uh, It's a little more in-depth than that. It's 100.5 Cruise FM. I mean, hey, if eating fresh is your kryptonite, this is actually something to potentially consider uh, starting today ending august 4th and then with the winner announced on the 7th subway name change.com is taking entrance for people who will commit to legally changing their first name to subway and in return one person is going to get a lifetime supply in the form of like uh, fifty thousand dollars in subway gift cards one-time payment Uh, So use that as you will, and uh, also $750 to cover any fees that might be associated with that actual legal name change to Subway. Yes, this does sound like the plot from a weird sitcom, because, I mean, it is. The community did this years ago. Years ago. I don't recall seeing Subway in my premenopausal post-feminist experiential marketing class. Actually, I'm on the wait list for the premen post-fem X mark. Who are you? Gang, meet Greendale's newest student, Subway. I'm here to hang out, take weird classes, and party as hardy as my morality clause allows. You ever negotiate with yourself? You know what I mean? Uh, That was Leather Jacket, Arkell's 100.5 Cruise FM. We did this last night in my humble abode. I was just feeling lazy, you know, like back to work, uh, fresh from vacation. We even got a whole bunch of groceries, and I, of course, was the one that was like, you know what? What if we just ordered something? I don't want to cook. But then that immediately turned into the negotiations. You know, where you, we specifically last night were like, okay, fine, yeah, yeah, fine. We can get the ordered food. We can do that. That's fine. As long as we go for a walk later on, a little evening constitutional. Got to keep those steps in, right? Or sometimes it's, okay, well, as long as I uh, get a workout in, I can have this or that, something like that. But last night, I will fully admit that it got to be about 11 o'clock. We both looked at each other and went, hey, we, uh, 
We didn't do that walk, did we? No, we just ate the food and then got lethargic with all of the carbs, and then it was not a good scene. Negotiating with yourself is important, but you also kind of have to actually pay up when it's time to. Don't worry, we'll do like two walks today or something. I'm lying. Wednesday. Facebook. You know, the whole blocking Canadian news content thing. I guess the other foot is dropping because we've started getting some notifications today uh, on the Facebook page, the 100.5 Cruise FM Facebook page, saying, hey, heads up, your content won't be visible across Canada. Um, and I don't think it's gone into effect yet. I think it's kind of like a rollout over the next couple of weeks. But, I mean, if you start just not seeing us on there, that might be why. It's super ambiguous, big old question mark. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but uh, i got to say... Our content not visible across Canada, super not helpful when you're a local radio station, right? Oh, no, I'm sure the people of Montana are very curious about our local summertime events and exactly when and where they're happening. But not really, uh, right? Why would they care? Now, if only there was still a way to get that local information without any corporate loopholing from the Metaverse or Google or any other giant global corporation. Oh, wait, there is, and you're already doing it right now. Just listening to the radio. What a novel idea. Uh, it's for free to boot, I might add. Honestly, just delete Facebook. If we didn't need it for work, I wouldn't be on there whatsoever. Radiohead getting contacted by none other than Robbie Williams, uh, originally of Take That fame. Uh, he says that he's been trying to get in touch with Tom York and the uh, whole group to uh, do uh, another version, a new version of It's Raining Men. <laughs> the Weather Girls hit from 1983. Uh, it seems like an interesting mix of talents to be covering that, um, but has yet to uh, have any response back. And now he says he might actually switch gears and go and see what Trent Reznor of the Nine Inch Nails is up to. Probably scoring some movie. But uh, Noel Gallagher is in the news again, uh, seemingly a lot for very small reasons. This time, just simply because he says he's just not cut out to be in command of a concert like others, uh, compatriots from his nation, uh, or at least his, you know, UK neck of the woods, Bono or Chris Martin. And uh, says that uh, when he performs on stage, it's just not the same. He's not cut out to do what they do. Um, uh, saying that he can do things with a crowd that the Gallagher can just simply not. I don't know. I think that maybe if you teamed up and brought Oasis back again, might actually see some of those giant crowds and big reactions, but that's neither here nor there. Barbie has reached fever pitch to the point of people getting buried in hot pink caskets. That's right. Uh, Foo Fighters, times like these. I saw Barbie over the weekend, pink shirt and all. It was was funny. It was a weird movie. Uh, Did not hate it. And nor did it hate men, like a lot of people are trying to say. But you cannot deny that it has had this weird cultural effect. And pink is everywhere. Everywhere. Wasn't really expecting it to get to the point of being pink at the... You know, funeral home, but that's where we are. And uh, largely, it's a lot of stories coming out of just one promotional ad for hot pink with stars uh, caskets that are now being sold. The promotional clip is a bit of a stretch. Let me just uh, let me just give you some of the copy from that. It says this coffin with its striking bright pink color represents the spark and energy of those unforgettable moments they lived. It is a reminder that our stories deserve to be remembered and celebrated with color and vibrancy. May this tribute be a celebration of love, colors, and unforgettable memories. Yeah, that's what they're trying to add to the sales pitch. Um, What you're trying to do is cash in on the Barbie trend. That's what that is. That's all that is. Let's just be honest. And you can be honest and people are still going to buy those caskets from you. Trust me, they're practically already sold. Thursday. The Turtles are back. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, they're kind of perennially back uh, every once in a while. Anyways, but a really new version now helmed by Seth Rogen coming out. Uh, Today's actually official release day. But uh, at San Diego Comic-Con just a couple weeks ago, it was also announced that uh, Nickelodeon, who have the rights to the franchise as far as the film rights go, also got the rights to the 80s television show that kicked off the very year that I was born, back in 1987. It's got a special place in my heart. And uh, they actually put the first season, which is only five episodes, like a five-episode kind of uh, origin story arc for the Turtles. Uh, They put that up on YouTube, on the official Turtles channel. And it is a trip to watch. Holy cow. Uh, They really just 
They really pooped out a lot of these kids' cartoon scripts back in the 80s. To be fair, they were all 22-minute ads for toys, but we ate it all up, didn't we? We ate it up. I, I had to laugh as well. As soon as I started watching, this is like three minutes in, a quote as April O'Neil is getting attacked by Shredder's goons for the very first time. <laughs> News media for crying out loud, who'd want to hurt us? Uh, them, maybe? <laughs> We're the news media, who'd want to hurt us? Well, answer, Mark Zuckerberg, or the Canadian government, or both, uh, depending on who you ask. Lara Zellrich of Metallica fame was just recently on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend podcast and talking about the history of Metallica and touring in Los Angeles where they were formed and where he says they have had some of their best shows, but also some of the biggest bills thanks to extremely passionate fans. He says that they've actually had to go on the local radio in L.A. Uh, several times, even make announcements at concerts saying, like, leave the cushions on the seats. There's specifically a Long Beach Arena situation where I guess the cushions are removable from the seats, and there'd be something like 15,000 of the 16,000 seats uh, been paid for by Metallica over the years saying, yeah, after the, uh, the show, next day, staff would say, hey, Metallica, here's 300,000 dollars worth of cushions that you have to pay for <laughs> and they're saying you're not rebelling against the venue you're not rebelling against the man you're rebelling against metallica at that point even saying at one point they had so many folding chairs at a certain show at the la coliseum uh, some thirty thousand folding chairs being thrown at the stage they had to stop the show which doesn't work for anybody but uh, the conversation spurred on by a recent trend of people throwing things at people on stage for i don't know some reason Hey Alexa, play the Steve Reeve podcast. When the headlines just don't even match the contents of the article, uh, this happens so often. For example, after we just heard from Lincoln Park here, 100.5 Cruise FM, the headline, Sleeping in on the weekend could be bad for you. Oh no. Actual information in the article, uh, we did a study on only 1,000 people and found that any small change in sleep schedule day to day can cause less favorable gut microbes to thrive, but it also might not have anything to do with sleep because we didn't get the participants to eat the same things as each other. So who knows? <laughs> That's it, right? Ah, yes. Very precise and definitive findings in your study there. So, I say. Sleep in on the weekend. Come on, we're all too tired all the time. We're all too stretched in a million different directions. Get caught up on some rest. Forget the stupid clickbaity so-called medical studies. And do you. Remember when, like, social media was just for posting photos of your food? Remember the times? I do. Fondly. Uh, it's, uh, you know, like any tool, social media is just another one on the tool belt that people can use to either build or destroy, right? And... The people that have built these social media uh, platforms seem to want to only destroy them now. We're navigating, like, do we still exist uh, as 100.5 Cruise FM on Facebook and Instagram? Can you even see what we're posting? What's going on? A big question mark there. Yay! If you want to find out the news, don't worry. It's still being posted right at cruiseradio.com. Make that part of the routine instead of just hitting up Facebook every single time. But uh, also then over on Twitter, is, is it Twitter? Is it X? I have no idea why they would ever want to change something that's so recognizable around the world as like tweeting and now turn it into Xing or Zting or whatever it is you want to call it. None of it makes sense. But now we also have in the world people putting up for auction their phones that aren't set to auto update that still have the Twitter icon showing up. Hey, I, I still have that. I, I never auto update my stuff. I go until the phone is like, hey, listen, you just can't use this anymore. Unless you connect to the internet and update this thing. That's how I live my life. But people are starting to sell these old iPhones with the original Twitter logo still on them online for up to $24,000 US. Nothing online makes sense anymore. Friday. Taylor Swift and her entourage, uh, if you hadn't heard, Taylor Swift took over the nation yesterday. Uh, the Canadian component of her North American tour has been announced with six consecutive dates in November in Toronto only. Yeah, a lot of people went, oh, hey, what, huh? It's very, um, you can come to me vibes, you know? And uh, people are aiming to do just that. They are locked in on ticket websites, scrambling to book time off work, and working on glittery handmade banners already. Already. 
And people are also already making the joke that uh, the timing of Justin Trudeau and Sophie Grégoire Trudeau announcing their separation is suspect, coming just before news of Swift's residency. <laughs> JT wishes, honestly. <laughs> There's no way. There's absolutely no way. I'd believe it more if Sophie was going to be having a six-day affair in November. But, again, I kind of doubt Metallica is in the news, uh, feeling a little bit regretful over a, a, a joke, a dig in a music video from years back. Talking about the Nothing Else Matters music video, there's a po point in that video where Lars Ulrich uses a man named Kip Winger's face as a dartboard. And actually, frontman of Metallica, James Hetfield, gave him a call to make an apology happen. Uh, it's, of course, one of the most legendary metal uh, albums, and that song amongst the top on the album. Uh, but oh, there was so many different digs at the culture of the 90s uh, in that music video, but that one in particular, Hetfield says, just wasn't cool. Uncool move, had to set it right. Tony Bennett, of course, passed away not that long ago, but just recently, his wife, who has survived him, uh, Susan Benedetto, shared his final words and added that uh, he woke up happy every day. Even if he had a bad day or night, he didn't remember it the next day. Um, he was uh, dealing with a lengthy battle with Alzheimer's disease, died at the age of 96. But the very f last words that he shared will touch your heart. He spoke to his wife knowingly and told her that he loved her. And that was that. Pretty touching. Google has just announced uh, new tools being made available for people using it. Uh, not to check out Canadian news articles. No, 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 not that. But it is still valuable. A few different things like being able to track when your personal contact information appears in search results, and being able to do something about that, and the headline-grabbing aspect where you'll have more power to have your nudes removed from search results, right? Giving people a chance to have sexually explicit images of themselves that may have made their way onto the internet removed from search engine uh, results. Listen, Google, I put them up there, and I want them staying there, okay? No, that's weird, that's gross. Um, I did have a roommate back in college days who was so thrilled at one point because he figured out the loophole. He told me with with absolute confidence, just don't send nudes with your face visible. That way no one can prove it's you. And we are talking consensual nude sending here. But I did have to burst his bubble. I reminded him that he had tattoos and that tattoos are identifying marks. You don't need a face in the photo. The smug look turned into a, uh, oh God, what have I done real quick? Transmission over. Want more Steve? New podcast episodes happen every Friday, or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show. Weekday mornings starting at 5.30 a.m. on 100.5 Cruise FM.